Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on post-harvest management of horticultural crops. I am the AI representation of Professor Kang Mo Ku, created by Eleven Labs using voice cloning technology. In today's session, we will delve into the specifics of the DPPH assay, a straightforward and cost-effective method to assess the quality of our crops by measuring their antioxidant capacities. Today's lecture objectives include proficiently analyzing and interpreting the results obtained from DPPH and total phenolic assays with a focus on elucidating their implications and significance. The DPPH assay is a widely used method for assessing antioxidant activity in crops by measuring the scavenging ability of antioxidants against the stable free radical DPPH. On the other hand, total phenolic content TPC indicates the combined concentration of diverse phenolic compounds in crops. Phenolic compounds play a crucial role in antioxidant activity and are vital for human health. Measuring DPPH and TPC assays provides insights into crop quality changes during post-harvest management, including storage, transportation, and shop display. This information is valuable for maintaining product integrity and ensuring consumer health benefits. Let me introduce materials required for conducting the DPPH assay. Each component plays a critical role in the experiment's success from the DPPH powder serving as the stable free radical to the testing sample, uh, which could range from plant extracts to synthetic compounds uh, representing the primary focus of our analysis. Additionally, the calibration standard a 10 millimolar gallic acid solution ensures accurate comparison of antioxidant capacity across different samples. Equipment such as the microplate reader, 96 well microplate, and pipettes of various volumes are indispensable for precise measurements and sample handling. Lastly, aluminum foil is used to shield the microplate during incubation, safeguarding against unwanted light exposure. With these materials at our disposal, we are equipped to embark on a comprehensive exploration of antioxidant analysis through the DPPH assay. Here's the step-by-step -step process of conducting the DPPH assay. Our first task is to dissolve 3.94 milligram of DPPH powder in 50 milliliter of methanol or another suitable solvent. Here's the step-by-step -step process for preparing testing samples. This slide suggests that for the experiment procedure involving the DPPH assay on fruit, the preparation of testing samples can either be liquid, such as fruit juice directly used for the assay, extract, where a consistent amount of the solid fruit is used to prepare an extract solution, which is then used for the assay. Here's the step-by-step -step process for preparing the standard solution. First, prepare a standard gradation of gallic acid using cereal dilution. Gallic acid should be initially prepared as a 10 millimolar solution in methanol. Then, dilute the gallic acid solution serially to achieve different concentrations for calibration. Alternatively, if using vitamin C as the standard, it should be freshly prepared each time. Vitamin C can replace gallic acid in the serial dilution process. These steps ensure accurate calibration of the assay, whether using gallic acid or vitamin C as the standard. Next, pipette, 10 microliters of the standard solution and add it to the second column of the microplate using a multi-channel pipette. Then, pipette 10 microliters of each sample into separate wells, ensuring to include multiple replicates as needed for robust analysis. For each sample, the student needs to add three replicates side by side to ensure consistency and reliability in the results. Add 190 microliters of DPPH solution to each well of the microplate containing the standard and sample solutions. Ensure that each well has an equal volume of DPPH solution for consistent reaction conditions. Following this, place the microplate in a dark environment and allow the samples and DPPH solution to react undisturbed for 30 minutes. This incubation period ensures sufficient time for the antioxidant compounds in the samples to react with the DPPH radical and produce measurable changes in absorbance, reflecting their antioxidant activity. Using a spectrometer, measure the absorbance of the samples 
at a wavelength of 515 nanometers. This step allows for the quantification of the reduction in DPPH absorbance due to the antioxidant activity of the samples. By comparing the absorbance readings of the standard and samples to a blank, we can determine the antioxidant capacity of the samples. The results of the DPPH assay uh, can be expressed as gallic acid equivalent, GAE concentration, based on the linear equation derived from the standard curve. Uh, this equation is typically in the form of y, y x plus b, uh, where e represents the absorbance value, uh, x represents the concentration of gallic acid, and a and b are the slope and y intercept of the standard curve, respectively. By substituting uh, the absorbance values of the samples into the equation, um, we can calculate their uh, corresponding concentrations in terms of gallic acid equivalents. Um, this allows for a standardized representation of the antioxidant activity of the samples uh, relative to gallic acid. Um, the DPPH assay is a method uh, commonly used to evaluate the antioxidant capacity of substances. It leverages the Beer-Lambert law to quantify the scavenging ability of antioxidants uh, against the stable radical DPPH. The Beer-Lambert law is a fundamental principle in spectrophotometry, which states that the absorbance, A, of a material is directly proportional to its concentration, C, the path length, B, and the molar absorptivity, epsilon, as represented by the equation A equals epsilon B C. When applying Beer's law to the DPPH assay, the color change resulting from the reduction of the purple DPPH radical to a yellow colored compound upon accepting an electron or hydrogen from an antioxidant is measured spectrophotometrically. Typically, the wavelength for maximum absorbance of DPPH is around 515 nanometers. The greater the antioxidant activity of the substance being tested, the more the DPPH is reduced, leading to a decrease in absorbance. The DPPH experiment results can be displayed similarly to this slide. I tested three crops previously, arugula, broccoli, and cabbage, with the results shown as GAE, gallic acid equivalent concentration. The small letters A and EB represent significant differences determined by 2K's test following ANOVA. We'll generate this bar graph after the DPPH assay during the lecture. These key factors for the DPPH assay help us draw robust conclusions about the antioxidant properties of our test substances. Remember, DPPH is sensitive to acidic sample, which give wrong value under acidic condition. Let's learn about the total phenolic assay, which is based on the folin chiocaltu method. This method is widely recognized as an approach for quantifying phenolic compounds. Here's how it works. Firstly, phenolic compounds in the sample react with the folin calte reagent under alkaline conditions. This reaction triggers the formation of a distinctive blue-colored complex. The intensity of this color directly correlates with the concentration of phenolic compounds within the sample. Essentially, the deeper the blue hue, the higher the concentration of phenolic compounds present. Through this simple yet effective process, we're able to precisely measure and quantify the total phenolic content of our samples, providing valuable insights into their antioxidant properties and potential health benefits. Let me explain detailed procedure. First, add five milliliters of the FC reagent to a 50 milliliter tube. Next, adjust the volume to 50 milliliters by carefully adding water. Ensure thorough mixing to achieve a homogeneous solution. To prepare the sample, begin by weighing 20 milligrams of freeze-dried powder into a 1.5 milliliter tube. Next, add one milliliter of 80% ethanol to the tube containing the powder. Afterward, centrifuge the tube at 10,000 RPM to separate the mixture. Carefully collect the supernatant, which contains the dissolved sample components 
for further analysis. For the reaction with the Folin-Thiocalteau FC reagent, begin by adding 10 microliters of the standard sample, which is gallic acid ranging from five millimolar concentration to several diluted concentrations to the reaction mixture. Additionally, add 10 microliters of the sample obtained from the prepared extract. For the reaction with the folin calteau reagent, add 100 microliters of the diluted folin calteau reagent to the test well containing the sample, assuming that 10 microliters of both the standard and sample have already been added. Mix the contents well and allow the reaction to proceed for five minutes in the dark at room temperature. Following the five minute incubation, add 90 microliters of 7.5% WV sodium carbonate solution to the mixture. Thoroughly mix the solution and let the reaction continue for an additional 90 minutes in the dark at room temperature. This step ensures complete development of the blue colored complex, which correlates with the concentration of phenolic compounds present in the sample. After the 90 minute incubation period, a blue colored complex develops as a result of the reaction between the phenolic compounds and the folin calteau reagent. To quantify the phenolic content, measure the absorbance of the complex at a wavelength of 765 nanometers using a spectrophotometer. Once the absorbance values are obtained, calculate the total phenolic content using the same method as we did in the DPPH assay expressing the result as gallic acid equivalents, GAE. Ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C, is a common antioxidant found in fruits and vegetables. In total phenolic content, TPC assays, its presence can interfere, affecting the accuracy of measurements. Similarly, other reducing sugars like glucose may also impact TPC measurements. To mitigate interference, organic solvents such as methanol or ethanol are often used for phenolic extraction as they may have lower affinity for sugars. Assessing antioxidant capacity through DPPH and TPC assays proves both simple and valuable for determining crop quality. Understanding the procedures and considerations involved in these assays equips us with practical skills. Mastering the 96 well-based assay methodology enhances our ability to conduct similar assays efficiently, thereby broadening our analytical capabilities. I trust that you have found the assays we've covered to be valuable and have gained insightful concepts for real experiments. I believe this knowledge will enhance your performance in experimental classes. Looking forward to seeing you in the class.